Man. That was a trick question. I was going to see if someone was like, no, nah, I'm just here to chill. Uh, before we began, I have not had coffee, so I need to wake up. It looks like we have all the labs represented. When I call your lab name, I want you to make as much noise as possible based on your level of happiness. If you are in the three-week lab with Jason, James, and Steven, make some noise. They've been beaten down by the various lectures. If you are in Lauren and Nick's lab, make some noise. Better, better, some of them are still asleep. I don't know what one of those noises were, by the way. If you are in Hayes and Gabby's lab, make some noise. All right, there we go. So I saw some fist pumping. Somebody was had a fidget spinner for no reason. Uh, if you're in Abby and Viva's lab, make some noise. All right, sure. And if you're in my and Anthony's lab, make some noise. Very diplomatic, very political. Oh, I apologize. Brett and Tim's lab, make some noise. There we go. For some reason, there was crowd surfing. I don't know why there was crowd surfing on the other side. I don't want to know what they're doing in their labs. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I got an hour and a half to talk about debate. We're going to talk about disad. This is not going to be a topic or a lecture where we talk about the specific disads that are in the packet. That will happen in your various labs. However, at the end, if you've got some questions, feel free to ask. What we will do, or what I will do, is attempt to teach you how to use them and how to debate them. This is a community, uh, it's basically what debate is. We're going to start from the basics and sort of work our way up to some advanced concepts. All right? And then all of a sudden I get a text. All right. I think that text is uh, information about a lab leader. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, so randomly I'm just going to introduce and give you important facts about various lab leaders. These have been fact checked. Uh, I have done infinite amounts of research, and I will tell you very interesting facts about your various lab leaders. So for example, how many people know who Hayes Watson is? Are you aware that Hayes Watson's real name is Watson Hayes? Did you know that? Yeah. Fact check, I Googled it, I actually looked at his birth certificate. All right, we will do more of these. Life-changing Life information right there. This whole time you've been sounding him Mr. Hayes, we should be calling him Mr. Watson. I know, surprise me. It's elementary. It is elementary, my dear. All right. So what is the disadvantage? What is the disadvantage? Who can tell me what a disadvantage is? Yes, sir. So it's pretty much like an off-case argument that says, oh, um, this is why we should not do the plan. Because right. the plan will cause like, this uh, impact to happen. That's okay. not associated with the case argument. All right. Love it. A disad, and this is a definition I just sort of wrote down, uh, is a negative argument designed to explain the damage caused by the plan or implementing the plan, uh, it helps debaters and judges determine whether or not the plan is a good idea. It is an off-case argument. An off-case argument meaning it was not originally introduced in the 1AC. Okay? A lot of people tend to think that we talk about DAs in terms of impacts, such as nuclear war, nuclear war, and guess what? Nuclear war. But however, the important thing that we really want to, or I want to focus on, is that there is a cause and effect relationship that is associated with doing the plan, a direct cause and effect relationship. So what I mean by that is, is that X causes Y. What's your name, sir? Disease. Ah, thank you. Even though he didn't say it, and I know what his name. All right. When I say that there must be a direct uh, cause and effect relationship, I mean that the plan actually triggers, quote unquote, the link. We'll talk about the various parts here in a second. Oh, by the way, there are a couple of rules I almost forgot. Number one, turn your cell phones off. If your cell phones are on, turn them off, all right? I know we all have friends and family who are not engaged in debate camp, but for the sake of argument, turn off your cell phones. Number two, if you have to go to the bathroom, go. Don't raise your hand, I trust you, all right? And three, I dismiss you, not 1030. So just because there's sweat in 1029 and I am still talking, I am still talking, all right? Your lab leaders will know that you may be running late, so don't worry about it. The key to the cause and effect relationship is we want to make sure that the DAs are explained in this total relationship. Why would we want to explain DAs in a direct cause and effect relationship? This is fairly, fairly simple. It's because they help us explain the disad clearly and effectively to the judge. 
We don't want to use some sort of high tech terminology. We want to say the plan did X, that causes Y. That's it. Fairly, fairly simple. If we can win that the plan and only the plan causes slash triggers the DA, then we can win that certain win for certain that the plan does something bad. If the negative does not win, that the AF does something bad, can the negative team win the debate? Who said yes? Did I hear someone say yes? All right, just check. No, there's no way it can be done. So we need to be able to establish how the affirmative does something that is bad. And we do this by determining whether or not the benefits of the plan are outweighed by the negative implications of the disaster. What I mean by that is, does the DA, does the harms of doing the plan outweigh the benefits of doing the plan? Ah, uh, another random fact. How many people know Mr. James Herndon? Are you aware that James Herndon is a huge fan of the Auburn Tigers and has a tattoo of War Eagle on his back? This is a true story, fact checked. You can actually see the tattoo through the shirt. That was a joke, you cannot see the tattoo through the shirt. I don't know why you all looked. He's not wearing a see-through shirt. It was weird. Some of you all were just like, can I see that shirt? All right. One very, very important thing that I want you to remember, two very important things. Number one, all arguments have a claim, a warrant, and is supplemented by evidence. Those are the three parts of an argument. Number two, I want you to think of a disad as a link chain. Who knows what a link chain is? How many people have seen a link chain? Like link chains? You know what I mean? Anybody ever seen a chain got links? Yes, perfect. All right? That'll come up a little bit later. So the parts of a disad, what's the first part of a DA that always gets read? Uniqueness. Sir, please read on the board what is the uniqueness means. X situation is happening now, AKA what will occur in the status quo. Right. What is the second part of a disad? Yes, sir. What is the link? All right, oh, well, you forgot a part. And only the plan. And only the plan, all right? I want it to be extraordinarily clear that we want to define this cause and effect relationship as the plan and only the plan triggers the disag. This will come up later when we talk about ways in which you can answer a disag. Who wants to tell me what an internal link is? Yes, ma'am. How do we connect to the attack? Yep, yeah. right, so how does what the change is cause the thing that is bad? For example, if the plan causes the economy to collapse, why does the U.S. economy cause a collapse of the global economy that causes nuclear war? Why do those two things connect? That is the job of the internal link. And finally, the impact. This is the one that's pretty much the easiest. Someone from, uh, someone from Brett and Tim's lab. Yes, sir? The impact or the implications of that bad thing. Yes, why is it bad? Right? We said this earlier. If we don't have a reason for while the affirmative does something bad, the negative cannot win. The impact explains that. So I want to go in and break these down a little bit further and talk about uh, some of the key components of uniqueness debate. And the first thing I want to talk about is that there are three important parts of uniqueness that people need to talk about. First is the brink. <coughs> Second is post-dating, or the date of the evidence. And third is qualifications. Qualifications of the person or newspaper organization uh, that wrote the article, all right? So, uh, I can't really do this. My handwriting is atrocious. So when we think of a link, I'm sorry, brink, we're talking about uh, the best example of this is like a cliff. Imagine that I am standing on the edge of a cliff. I am on the brink of going over, but I have not gone over yet. It is, I'm safe, but if I take this one step, I'm no longer safe. I'm somewhere in the abyss, okay? The reason we talk about uniqueness like that is because we want to say that the current situation is occurring now but it may not continue if a variety of things happen, right? The plan or an action that pushes me over that brink. Does that make sense? By the way, if I say something and I'm going too fast or you're unclear, make me repeat it or say, Eric, slow down. Either or, don't care. All right? Next is post day. I want to spend a little bit of time here because this is one of the places where debaters generally tend to mess things up a little bit. If I read a card from a month ago, is that card old? It depends. It depends. It depends on what has happened since that particular card was written. Generally, we tend to think 
that evidence that is the newest is always correct, and that's not always the case. Well, let me rephrase that. We tend to think that if something isn't as new as possible, it must be old, and that is incorrect. If I were to read a card from April that said that Donald Trump is president, is that sufficient in terms of uniqueness? Yes. Right, because it's not like he's not become president all of a sudden. If he had, I would get an alert about that. Right? But what if I read a card from 2016 that said the Cleveland Cavaliers are the NBA champions? Can I use that card? Something happened. And if you're a Cavs fan, something bad happened. All right? So when we talk about post dating, we're talking about the most recent evidence that can be produced. All right? What debaters tend to do is they will hear a card from, say, May 1st, and they will say, that card is old, it's from May, it should be thrown out. That is false. You need to provide a counter piece of evidence that is newer, that explains what that new piece of information is or new situation is. If you don't do that, you have not made an argument. Why? Because you have not met the three parts of an argument. You've made a claim, but you don't have any warrant or any evidence to back it up. Does that make sense? Remember, three parts of an argument, claim, warrant, evidence. And last but not least is qualifications. A lot of times, this sort of gets lost in the uniqueness debate because we kind of focus on the brink and sort of the like data of the evidence. But qualifications are important. If someone actually did produce a card that had that said Donald Trump is no longer president, and it was from today, but that person was a ten-year-old writing a blog, would that card be credible as a uniqueness card? No. No. Even though it is super new, right? It is no reason that we should be using that piece of evidence. So you need to evaluate the qualifications, right? If I have a piece of evidence from May and it's from the Washington Post, clearly that is true, right? Also, there's, where, where's my friend? Common knowledge. Unless like we've heard something different, I think Donald Trump is still president. All right? So do we understand Brink? We good? Understand post dating? Understand qualifications? All right, moving on. Link and internal link. The reason that uh, link and internal link, when we want to talk about a cause and effect relationship or a direct cause and effect relationship, is because we want to make sure that the plan, only the plan, triggers the disag. Who can give me a reason for why we want it to be so specific? Yes, sir. So then we can just make a simple like, no link generic argument saying, like, this link is so generic that the disag should have been triggered, like, you should have been triggered. Yes, right? So let's give you, let me give you an example of that. If we ran, run an econ dis ad, and the econ dis ad has a link that says uh, school regulations cost billions of dollars, and you're reading the school lunch affirmative, who can tell me what a no link argument to that would probably be? Just talk loud, raise your hand. Yes? We already have school regulations. We already have school regulations, what else? Yes? There is no link between school regulations and costing billions of dollars? No, think about the plan. What, think about the plan itself. Right? One of the things that you can say, who else wants to take a shot? Yes? The plan doesn't cost a lot of money. Sure, plan also potentially <coughs> cost a lot of money, right? One of the other things to talk about is, is that the plan, wait, I have a better question. Does, does the plan do a regulation? Or does it do like funding? It does funding and regulation, right? It does both, right? But it's a possibility that a school lunch does not cost as much as a regulation specified in the link card. Does that make sense? All right. So that's one way you can say, like, look, our specific piece of evidence says we don't spend a ton of money. Your link card is about regulations that cost trillions of dollars. That's not the plan. However, if the link says school lunch regulations and funding will cost $25 billion per year for the next 10 years, is that a much more specific piece of evidence? All right. So it's harder for the affirmative team to say that it doesn't apply to the plan. The second component I want to talk about is that there must be a conversation about link uniqueness. This is just generally in both sides. Link uniqueness is a question of whether or not the event described by the link to the DA has already happened. If the link, if the uniqueness argument is that the, if the US economy is on the brink of collapse, the link card says allowing Donald Trump to become president ruins the US economy. What is the problem with that link? It's not unique. Not unique. It's already happened which means either the disaster should have already been triggered or allowing Trump to be president won't kill the economy. 
One of those two things must be true. However, if the link to the dissent is reversing Donald Trump's executive orders when it comes to school regulations costs federal budgets billions of dollars that would then cause a trade-off with special education. Has that happened yet? Have we reversed or has Donald Trump changed his mind on his recent executive orders on this issue? Yes or no? No. So that means that is unique. When you are dealing with link arguments, one of the things you want to make sure is that your link story has not already been triggered. Make sense? Make sense? Okay. Impact. I could talk about the fact that the impact needs to be as big as possible, but we'll deal with that when it comes to impact calculus. I could talk about the fact that you want to make sure you have the sweetest uh, impact card that you can find. I didn't want to talk about that. I didn't want to sort of talk about that why the impact needs to be as specific to the internal link as possible. Who can tell me why why I may think that is true? Why do you think it needs to be true? Yes, sir. I'm looking for something a little bit different, but that also is true. Anybody want to take a stab? All right. It needs to be as specific as possible to the uh, internal link because a coherent because it's key to that coherent explanation of X causes Y. For example, if the internal link is about a dollar crisis occurring because of the plan, but the impact is merely about global economic collapse causing nuclear war, what is the causal relationship between dollar collapse and global economic collapse? Do we know what that is based on the dissent I just described? <coughs> hmm? Who says yes? Who says no? All right. Who says I'm not sure? Perfect. The reason why it is not as specific is because the actual impact card itself doesn't tie the collapse of the dollar to a collapse of the global economy. Right? But in the actual spending this ad, the impact card that we do have is pretty specific to this particular issue. So the reason you want that is so teams don't go, there's no internal link, there's no impact, there's no reason why a collapse of the dollar will kill the global economy. Next team should be able to get back up and say, yes, it does. Our evidence says X, Y, and Z. All right? Make sense? All right, impact calculus. Impact calculus are key to the base because it helps us weigh the impacts because you will never win 100% of all of your impacts. You may think you have, but you didn't. Trust me, I'll judge you. You won't. So we need to be able to determine which impact is greater. Is uh, a global warming greater than nuclear war and extinction? Well, I don't know unless we do these three things. This is in no particular order. The first one is probability slash risk. Which impact is more likely to occur? Time frame, which impact will happen faster? And magnitude. So when I talk about probability, you need to answer two specific questions. Question number one is why is your impact more probable? Why is it more likely to occur? Global warming is more likely to occur because the United States is pulled out of Paris, they're the biggest global emitter, they're, they represent 50% of all emissions. There's no other intervening actor, and I'll talk about that in a second. There's no other intervening actor to be able to cut global emissions. It is uniquely probable. Warming will occur in the status quo. Okay? Then you need to explain why is their impact not probable. Right? Nuclear war will rarely occur because of things like economic interdependence, free trade, and relationships between multiple countries. It'll never escalate to nuclear war. On the one hand, one scenario is probable. On the other hand, the scenario is not probable. Does that make sense? All right. You do the same thing with time frame. Time frame, why is your time frame quicker? A, I don't know, a, a asteroid is on the path to hit the, hit the United States within the next two months. That is a faster time frame than people having their health improved by improving school lunches. It takes longer to reverse health from eating better lunches than it does to have to stop an asteroid from hitting the Earth. I do not know if an asteroid will hit the Earth. Let's just assume it does. All right? And magnitude. Which impact is bigger? Which impact is smaller? All right? 
I need two volunteers. One, two, come forward. Give me a hand. All right, I'm going to give you all two different impacts. All right, I'm going to give you, I'll say 30 seconds to explain to the group why your impact outweighs the other impact, okay? I'm telling you your impact. Ready? Okay, I'm telling you your impact. No, please don't. Please don't talk fast because I don't want to hear it. Okay. Okay? All right, who wants to go first? <laughs> All right, hold on. Hmm? You want you have to use some of the impact. Effort. So if you want to use probability, you have to explain why yours is more powerful than this. His? Oh, uh, low warm. All right. Take you a couple seconds to think about it. Ready? All right. On your word, I'll start. Okay, so the probability of um, yield China war killing more people than global warming is very high. You see that the tensions are rising with U.S. and China right now, especially with the president. Also, the time frame of like the effects that we see of U.S. China war will um, be way quicker than global warming. Global warming hasn't occurred since like the beginning of time, and it still hasn't changed anything. So we see that U.S. China war will actually kill more people at a fast pace, and the magnitude is way bigger. Global warming will only kill a couple of species while nuclear war from U.S. China war will actually kill uh, in the entire like world. Basically. All right. Stop. Okay? All right. Give you a couple quick seconds. And now I want you to explain why global warming should outweigh uh, U.S. China war. Let me know you're ready. All right. Go. I think global warming outweighs U.S. China war and probability because global warming is going on in the status quo. U.S. China tensions are like like stabilized in the status quo because Xi and, uh, Xi and uh, Trump are like friendly. And then on time frame, like even though like warming seems like a slow time frame, there's literally carbon emissions that are going on in the status quo that are like closing off our atmosphere. So like even if you're not looking at this time frame, you can look to probability and on magnitude. The global warming has a way larger magnitude because it'll literally make like nuclear war, like you know, a war between U.S. and China worse because like warming would make like the carbon emissions even worse and like it's just a larger impact that affects the world. All right, <laughs> good job. Give him a hand. Okay. I think that was two good examples of sort of how to use impact calculus. Now, both of them use some verbs that I want to sort of talk about next, and that's sort of why I did this. These are the three main sort of impact calculus people, people you generally will uh, say, risk, time frame, magnitude. Uh, but there's a second level of impact calculus that I want people to think about when they're doing their impact calculus. All right, these are the next levels of sort of impact efforts, all right? <clears throat> the first one is impact inclusivity. One impact is inclusive of another. Uh, young man with the birthday sweater, what's your name? Charlie. Charlie. Charlie said that global warming would cause, well actually no, that's not what I want to use. Uh, if, say your name for me? Serena. Serena. If Serena would have said US-China war will cause nuclear extinction and nuclear winter, which would then accelerate global warming, she will be making an argument that her impact is inclusive of her opponent's impact. It causes that impact, okay? Next is an argument that is called irreversibility. I sort of hinted at this a little bit earlier. Irreversibility is an argument that says that one impact, once it starts, cannot be reversed. A great example of that is warming. Right now, a lot of people when they write articles about global warming say that global warming is irreversible once it reaches a certain tipping point. Think of tipping point much like in the same conversation as a brain. Once I step over that, there's no coming back. Once I hit that ground, it's not like, what's that cartoon, Looney Tunes? I don't get up like Sylvester. It's not, no, Sylvester did. Spoiler alert. I know some of you all thought he survived. He did. He gone. All right? So one of the reasons that we can determine that our impact is is, is outweighs is because global warming is irreversible. However, there are intervening actors, and Charlie sort of made reference to this argument, when he said that there are other relationships that can help mediate a U.S.-China war conflict. Trump and Putin are friends. He can use that to sort of mediate relations when it comes to China. Excuse me. Make sense? Make sense? Yes. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Next is DA turns the case. One impact prevents a positive impact from happening. If we are on, if we are currently 
uh, working to resolve through Paris, through businesses uh, engaging in renewable energy or environmentally safe practices that we are fighting against global warming now, a nuclear war and extinction would probably prevent us from working on those things, right? If a large scale nuclear war occurs, what happens to the people who are working to fight against global cli uh, climate change? What happens to them? They die, right? I'm, I can't recycle my various cans of soda. Some of you all can't recycle your various fidget spinners. Some of them are massive and take up a lot of pollution. It's true. Fidget spinners are the reason that global warming exists today. It's not mine. It's not. It's right here. I told you I had I had these resources. Uh, next one is DA solves the case. This argument says that maintaining the status quo of the disad is critical to the uh, implement implementation of the affirmative plan. You see this in the FISM disad. There's a card that says that in order for uh, the plan to be implemented effectively or to prevent states from fighting back. We need to maintain a balance between the United States and federalism. If that balance goes awry, then states will push back against the plan and try not to implement it. Who can give like an empirical example of when that has sort of occurred? Say, say it louder. Say, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yes, in the back. Civil War? Yeah. All right, give me, what's the example? Okay, who can think of a more recent one? That's a good one. Who can think of a more recent one? Yes. That's a good example. I like that, right? The federal government is trying to deport individuals and the states are pushing back against it. That's a good one. What about what, uh, what Michelle Obama did when she tried to implement a variation of school lunches? What happened? Asada? Right, because they felt that it was over encroachment on the, by the federal government, right? So the maintenance, the maintenance of US, federal, U.S. federal government state balance is necessary to be able to ensure proper implementation of the plan. Who can tell me why they would think that that's really important? Why is it important to make this last argument? Who can give me a reason? If the disad is necessary to solve the case, is it possible for the app to say the app outweighs? No, why? It can't solve, exactly. If the AF can't solve its own case, what advantages do they, do they solve? What advantages do they have to their disposal or their benefits? So the point of this is to ward off the affirmative team's best sort of offense against these kind of arguments. Uh, Flater, uh, I need to find some more uh, lab leader uh, details. Can you give an interesting fact about a lab leader that you may have? Yeah, who have we not gone? Uh, we took care of Hayes, we took care of Herndon, uh, Gabby. Gabby, you have anything interesting yeah, on Gabby? So here's here's a really how many of you know Gabby? A really interesting fact about Gabby: when Gabby was eight years old, she entered a, a school science competition. Little known fact: she is the one who invented the mm. idea of the fidget spinners. It's true. She it's true. did not uh, patent it. And that is why she's teaching here and it's not in Cabo, right? Now. Right. She but should have had Ask her about her fidget spinning invention. True. Oh, I did get one. I got an email uh, from a Mike Davis. Does anybody know who Mike Davis is? Anybody? Anybody know who Mike Davis is? Okay. Uh, anybody know who Nick is? Anybody know who Nick is? Uh, so when Nick was being recruited out of college, uh, Mike Davis, who was the director of debate at James Madison University, had a very, very massive fight to get uh, young Nick to come join the debate team because at that time he was practicing for the Olympics uh, to become one of the 4 by 100 runners for the Jamaican uh, uh, race team. So yeah, he was on the Jamaican Olympic team. Uh, clearly look at the legs, the man has speed written all over him. I heard he's gonna try out for the Atlanta Falcons. All right, all right, let's move on. What team, what team did you say? God, they need a wide receiver. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. All right. Here are bad versions of impact calculus. As a judge, one of us, one of us older people in this room, has always heard one of these variations of impact calculus. Some of you all have probably said one of these things. It is okay. It is my job to try to break you of that habit. Who wants to read the first one? Someone who has not spoken. Yes, with the hood on. Our DA outweighs the case because of time frame and 
Yes, it is so much faster that I don't know why it's faster. Because there's not a warrant. Is there a warrant in that first one? Is there evidence? All my younger debaters who are just learning about what debate is, please try not to do this. Let this be your template for how not to do overviews. People in the three-week lab, if you are doing this, by God, stop. If you are in my lab and you do this, please don't. You will make me cry. <laughs> by the way, Akbuli is a champion uh, ballroom dancer. Remind him of that. <laughs> he is a champion ballroom dancer. He took ballet in high school for three years. Who wants to read the second one? Yes. Yes. What outweighs on magnitude and what case are you referring to? I have no idea what your impact is if you say this. Who, who is we? I don't I maybe know who we is, I guess. But magnitude, how? How is it bigger than the case? What are the impacts that you're comparing? There's no contestation. Right? You need to tell me what those impacts are, and then you need to weigh them out on either time frame, magnitude, or what's the other one? Oh, louder. louder. Thank you. All right. Uh, young lady with the uh, flannel, read the third one for me. Yes. Also, the outweigh on probability. It's super probable, and it turns the case because in a war, no one would do their plan. It's so probable. It's super probable. Like super probable? Or say it's really probable. Right? At least I know there's a war. I don't know who's involved in the war. I don't know what kind of war it is. It could be a war involving fidget spinners. The war to end all fidget spinners. That sounds like a good thing. No. We need to, we need to end this curse known as fidget spinners. Exactly. Oh, oh, yeah, no, yes. Ah. Uh, end fidget spinners. Curse fidget spinning is a curse. It needs to go away. You're just spinning a top. All right? But, huh? Do we need the coffee lift thing? Yes, this, this is my interpretation of fidget spinning. Want to see it? <laughs> that is fidget spinning to me. Which little known fact about Eric Mathis in oh. college, he was a hand model. You could see it in the way he was holding the fidget spinner. Hand model, that is how he made his way through college. It's true. There was no such thing as Uber when I was in college, so I can only hand model. <laughs> what I did. I forgot I told Flavor that. I told you that in confidence. All right? But the problem is, there are things here we need to get rid of. Just say this. Say, we outweigh on probability. Don't say, we can say also, but if you're trying to Don't say super. Unnecessary. We outweigh on probability. It's not even probability. That's talk. What is that? Uh, it, and it turns the case. I like that part. So far, we're pretty good. Tell me what kind of war it is. Who's getting involved in that war? Is it global nuclear war? Is it US-China war? Is it Middle Eastern war? Is it Russia-China war? Be specific. This is very, very important. When you're doing any impact calculus, you need to be as specific as possible about the issues that are occurring between the two impacts. Does that make sense? Identify your own impact and identify your opponent's impact. All right? This person is sort of conflating some things because it says at the end, no one would do their plan. It sounds like DA turns the case. A little bit there, but that's fine. I appreciate it. So this one is probably the closest to something, but it still is not very good. All right, anybody got questions so far? Questions? All right. Now, I'm not just going to talk about how to read this ad or how to win DAs. I'm going to talk about how to answer them as well. All right? There are two types of arguments. One is defensive. One of them is offensive. Who knows what a defensive argument is? What is it? Don't tell me what kind they are. Just tell me what it means. I like that. It's good. That's perfect. The point of a defensive argument is to stop them from winning the disad. You can't win the disad, i.e. claim it as an advantage or claim it as a benefit of the plan, but you sure can probably win that it has a lower risk of being out of outweighing the actual impact of the affirmative. Does that make sense? Who knows what an offensive argument is? Asad. Um, arguments that say the plan is bad, usually under DA and the No, no, no. If you're affirmative, what are what does it oh, mean? Your yes. Uh, if you're 
No, that's not what we're looking for. Who can tell me what an offensive argument is? Yes. It's like why the why the app that does Yeah, there, there are arguments that can help you win the debate on those arguments, right? So, a good way of explaining sort of like what a we're scrolling. So, a good way of sort of doing or understanding defensive arguments versus offensive arguments, right? Who here has an annoying brother or sister? Raise your hand. A lot of hands went high on that. We're like, oh my god, I hate that kid. All right, how many of you all like cookies? All right, at some point, I don't know where, I don't know when, but at some point, you are going to steal your brother or sister's cookie. I don't know why. You, you're just thieves who like to eat cookies. And when that happens, your parents are going to come home. And that kid, you know your little brother is going to snitch and say, he ate or she ate my cookie. And then what are the parents going to ask you? Did you steal their cookie? And there are two ways you can respond to that question. You can say, no, -uh, I didn't steal it. It was the dog. And the dog is there like, hmm? <laughs> and then the dog walks off with his fidget spinner. <laughs> right? Maybe you set the dog up and put crumbs all around his mouth. Why would you do that, by the way? That's so mean. The dog is just a dog. Right? The point of that argument is that you can't win 100% the entirety of that conversation because now your parents still have to investigate whether or not the dog actually ate the cookie. I don't know how they do it. Maybe they got cameras. I don't know. Right? Or you can say the following. Yes, I took the cookie because little such and such was about to eat the cookie and they were going to choke. And I took the cookie away from them and took it out of their mouth, threw it away, and then I ate the rest to make sure that they didn't choke. That is an offensive argument. Your parents would be like, oh my God, thank you for saving your little brother or sister. You are so cool. I bought you an even bigger fidget spinner. All right? I feel like Kyrie Irving, when he goes to make a layup, is doing fidget spinning. All right? So let's talk about the types of defensive arguments in debate. There's non-unique. If uniqueness is what is happening in the status quo, and non means the opposite of something, what is non-unique? Not unique. Not happening, right? Very, very simple. That's an easy one for even if you are in the most basic of lab to understand. Right? Not unique. Not, nothing happening. Nothing to see here. That whole thing about Donald Trump was a mirage. We still don't know who the president is. It's a robot somewhere in the lab pushing buttons. <coughs> sure, that too. The second type of defensive argument is a no link argument. All right? No link. There is zero causal relationship between the plan and a change in the status quo. <coughs> if the link to the dissad says that the plan causes Betsy DeVos to, who's Betsy DeVos, by the way? Education Secretary. Good job, Ernie. If the, plan, if the link says that the plan causes Betsy DeVos to lose her job, and nothing in the plan says Betsy DeVos loses her job, is there a causal relationship between the plan and the dissent? Not yet, right? I don't know what it is. You just read a card that says that uh, e education regulations causes Betsy the votes to lose her job. I don't know why that's specific. Remember, S specific. This is why we need the link to be as specific as possible so firms can't weasel their way out of dissent debates. Internal link. No internal link, excuse me. There's no connection between the link and the plan and the impact. The US economy is not key to the global economy. Therefore, it can't collapse the global economy. Does that make sense? There's no connection between the United States economy, economy and the global economy. Make sense? And then last but not least, there's no impact. Nothing bad will happen. If a nuclear war occurred, nobody would die because it would occur in a desert. That probably is not true, but roll with it. Maybe a better sort of no impact argument is that for global warming, there is no extinction to global warming because of things such as adaptations, humans will adapt to the rise in temperatures and other technologies to help humans adapt. So tech and adaptation ensures no extinction. That's sort of like the go-to gold standard for how to answer global warming impact claims. All right? These are four types of defensive arguments, but I do want to talk about a couple of others 
that are a little bit more advanced. Thumpers and uniqueness overwhelms the length. Who knows what a thumper is? A thumper is something that you do to your little brother or sister when they get on your nerves. No, it is also sort of an alternate cause argument. Something else should trigger the disadvantage, right? You see this in a couple of the disadvantages that we have already in the packet, where either Trump or someone else should have done something to trigger the plan. If the econ disadvantage says uh, the link is spending money, kill or spending money caused the collapse of the global economy or the U.S. economy, and you read a card that says Trump's new budget will spend trillions of dollars on military spending. That would seem to thump the disad. It should have already triggered the disad because it cost a ton of money to fund the military. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I think in the federalism one, I think there's arguments about how Trump is doing other things to upset U.S. federal balance, like ICE, EXO, like uh, forcing states to turn over information, like sanctuary cities, a variety of other things that Trump should be doing to upset federalism. So if that's the case, the DA should have already been triggered. How do we respond to this? Have the link be as specific as possible to the plan. Two caveats for thumpers. Number one, a good thumper should say that whatever is happening in the status quo will continue to happen in the future. Generally what people will read is a thumper that says X has happened in the status quo. The negative will respond with, our uniqueness debate already post-dates that. It assumes that. Remember we talked about post-dating earlier? Remember that conversation? So if I have a card that's from today that says the economy is fine, and you read a card that says two weeks ago Trump did X or Trump did Y, the uniqueness debate overwhelms that. Because the uniqueness debate says it should have already been triggered. We've priced that in. Okay? But if you have a thumper card, yes. There's two types of thumpers. There are two caveats to thumpers. Okay. This is what I'm saying. So not two types. All right? Uh, but does that make sense on the thumpers? If you have a thumper that says that it will continue in the future, that means that the plan does not uniquely trigger the DA. Okay? That doesn't mean you shouldn't read that card that says X, Y, and Z is happening in the status quo, but if you're doing debate research, you want to find evidence that indicates that something will occur in the future. A good one is on the federalism or the fact that Trump will continue pushing for no sanctuary cities and pushing the ICE regulations, right? Those two things will continue in the future and should continue to disrupt the federal balance, federal state balance, excuse me. Who has heard of the argument uniqueness overwhelms the limit? Raise your hand high. Uh, in the old Navy, what does uniqueness overwhelms the limit? Louder, louder. Louder. Well, the uniqueness is like so strong, but the link isn't enough to actually change what's happening. Okay, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. Does uniqueness overwhelm the link? Is it a uniqueness answer or a link answer? Link answer. Link answer. Who says link? Who says uniqueness? Okay, it is. it does test the link, and thank you very much. Good answer. All right. It tests the unique. I'll give you a great example. The economy is strong now. The plan costs a hundred dollars. U.S. economic collapse leads to global economic collapse leads to war. What is the problem with that disad? Mm -hmm. There's, uh, 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 so what's about? Yeah. On the next, like, or, let's see, my man. The ten dollars won't break the U.S. economy. Not ten. I said a hundred. Oh, well, the hundred still won't. Right. Exactly. Right. If the U.S. economy is so strong now. Spending a hundred dollars shouldn't kill the economy. Whoa. Save. All right. That means one or two things. Either the U.S. economy really isn't that strong, which means the impact to the disaster should have already been occur triggered, or I could spend a hundred dollars on anything, or the federal government spends a hundred dollars on golfing, or plane tickets, or those really nice little tray of food you get on the airplane to have nuts in your fruit. That thing, that thing costs like a hundred bucks, right? All those things should have already collapsed to the global economy by now, right? So you need to know what the link tests the strength of the link to the disad. It tests the strength of the cause and effect relationship. If it is true, uh, a good one, who debated on the China topic last year? 
Who debated uh, the election just said on the travel topic? All right. Who remembers, like, there were a bunch of cards that came out that said there's no way that Hillary Clinton can lose the election. Trump is doing too many things to cause him to lose, to win the election. A lot of people make the argument that uniqueness overwhelms the win. Clinton was so strong in the polls that if the election occurred today, there's no feasible way she would lose. The second component of that was what Democrat who was already going to vote for Clinton will switch sides and then vote for Trump. I'm being kind of happy. All right? Uniqueness over long length is a very powerful argument. If you can correctly identify that the uniqueness is too strong, that the break part of the uniqueness debate, right, instead of you being on the edge, I'm somewhere way over here. If you can identify the fact that your the uniqueness of this ad is too strong to, for anything to kill it, then ultimately you can win the dis ad. All right. Mm. Offensive arguments. This is the fun part of the debate. Now, I know some of you all probably have been told at some point that the link turn consists uh, link turn consists of a non-unique argument. What's a non-unique argument, someone? So raise your hand high. Someone tell me what it is. I just said it. In the back. Louder. Right. It's not happening in the status quo. Okay? And then they say you need a link turn argument. All right? The link turn argument is that the plan does the opposite of the link. Instead of the plan costing money, the plan saves money. Instead of the plan ruining U.S. federal balance, the plan strengthens U.S. federal balance. But there's a third component that I want to implement to make sure that people do in a debate. Young man with the red shorts, you okay? Like you're sleeping. I ain't seen you type a word in like five minutes. Do you need to stand up a little bit? You wanna have a sprint, you wanna race? You sure? Me and Herndon, literally by ourselves, outran Julio Jones. It's true, it's true. Uh, I think he hurt his ankle and fell like 10 yards back, but we, we, we beat him is the case, is the point. We did beat him, all right? The third part is a no-link argument. You need to have a no-link argument as part of your link turn to the disable. The reason being is because you need to disprove the original link is true. Some people tend to think that the actual link turn accomplishes this, and I would say maybe in certain circumstances, but to hedge your bet, you need to make arguments such as not only does the plan not cost money, but the plan saves money. It makes it a stronger link turn at that point. Does that make sense? Make sense? All right. And then, I'm going to be honest, my favorite argument in debate, especially if like one of my debaters is in the room and heard me talk about this, is an impact term. Impact term debates are fun. Very, very simple. First part, there's no impact. There's no impact to economic collapse. Economic collapse does not cause nuclear war. The second component of the impact term is the actual impact term arc itself. The impact is actually good. Collapsing the US economy is good because economic growth causes resource depletion, which ruins the environment, which triggers global warming. That is a standard impact term that you will hear. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Here's the way it looks if you were to actually implement a disad. Or implement a disad. US economy is strong now. Plan kills the US economy. US economy is keeps the global economy. Collapse of the global economy sparks the nuclear war. Somebody, if you read the if you win the link turn debate. Somebody read the way the link turn or the, or the this ad now sounds. Danny. The U.S. economy is not strong now. The plan does not kill the economy. The plan causes a boost in the economy. The U.S. economy is key to the global economy. and collapses the global economy starts to the war. All right. So now if the this ad sounds like this, is the plan doing a good thing or a bad thing? A good thing. How many people said it's doing a good thing? Raise your hand. Who thinks it's doing a bad thing? There's no anti-capitalists in the room. Interesting. All right? So this is what you want the debate to sound like if you read a link term. Okay? Now, this is what it looks like if you win an impact term. Somebody read the DA post the impact term for me. Yes? The U.S. economy is strong now. The plan kills the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy is key to global economy. 
All right. So you see how the impact turn works? The impact turn works in another fashion because you probably are like, look, I got better impact turns than I have link turns. This is a good example with the federalism debate. There's not a link turn in that debate, in that packet at all. But there is an impact turn, for those of you all who have not read the packet, spoiler alert, uh, there is an impact turn on the federalism debate. Okay? Whereas I think there is a link turn on a couple of the econ debates. All right? Now, this is very, very important. There's a rule when it comes to reading offensive arguments. Who knows what that rule is? There's one thing you cannot do when you read offensive arguments. Let me pick someone who hasn't gone yet. Who hasn't gone yet. Have I called on you with the Yankees guy? No. All right, what's your name? Josh. Josh. It's fine. All right, Josh, what is the number one rule of reading offensive arguments? Don't double turn yourself. Do not double turn yourself. What is the double turn? Never read, I got it, never read a link turn and an impact turn at the same time. No matter what, never do it. We've all done it. We all went crap. I did that. All right? Somebody read what the disad looks like in a world where you double turn yourself. Who wants to read? Yes, sir. The U.S. economy is not strong now. The plan is not to build the economy. The plan causes a boost in the economy. Collapse of the global economy does not cause the global warming. Collapsing the global economy is good because economic growth causes environmental degradation, which triggers runaway global warming, which causes extinction. All right. This is now, you've just read a new disag against yourself. You've said that the plan does something that prevents something good from happening. For example, right? If the economy is not strong now, that means that we are going to collapse the economy in the status quo. And if we do that, that's a good thing because we need to stop global warming. Does that make sense? However, the plan does what? It boosts the economy. So it saves the US economy, which means we can't do what? We can't stop global warming. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes. Never, ever, ever. Read both pieces of offense. Please. However, if you want to know how to pick up a ballot on that, ask Jason. All right. There is a rule. There's uh, other types of what I call offensive arguments. Who's heard of an add-on? All right. An add-on is an argument that explains how the affirmative solves an additional impact not originally read in the 1AC. There's two ways to read them. It can be a shortened version of a normal advantage you didn't read in the 1AC. So how many advantages are in the school lunches that? Somebody from three weeks. How many advantages? Three. Three. Huh? Three. Oh, three. Thank you. So for example, if I say the small farmer's advantage, right, I could potentially turn that into an add-on. Maybe something very short and sweet. Two to three cards, roughly. Another form of an add-on is to read a card that says the affirmative solves the impact to the disable. So let's take let's use now the econ example, right? If you read two different advantages, maybe one of the things that you read is a card that says uh, the impact the the disad solves global, uh, nuclear war because it boosts uh, other ties besides say collapse U.S. economy. Maybe it boosts free trade. Maybe it boosts uh, U.S.-China relations. Maybe it boosts uh, U.S.-China-Russia relations. I don't know. Something. Okay? But it's a card that says that we solve your impact. It's explaining how the affirmative solves an impact not originally read in the 1AC. Make sense? <coughs> there are rules to reading add-ons. Number one, it must be in the 2AC. You cannot read an impact, uh, sorry, an add-on in the 1AR because there's a general rule in the debate that states the, two, the negative team gets to cross X you on the new impact scenario. Can I cross X you in the 1AR? No. So it must be read in the 2AC. There are caveats to that, actual average. I'm not going into that. 
Second is it should not be impact turnable. Yes. Yes, sir. There you go. Flater, while she's uh, taking notes, uh, would you like to inform us? Give us another uh, important tidbit about some of our lab leaders. Yep. So uh, y'all know Lauren, who gave the lecture yesterday. Yes. A uh, little known fact about Lauren, Lauren was nominated for Teacher of the Year in the state of Georgia, but not for government and debate, which she teaches, but in fact for a 6 a.m. body fitness boot mm. camp thing. Yeah, she yeah. got third place. It was just released mm -hmm. on Monday. Uh, she got third place. So you all should go and congratulate her on her third place uh, Georgia Teacher of the Year. Event. Absolutely. That's brilliant. I totally forgot about that. It was on the second page of my notes. I apologize. Oh, um, who knows who Vivas is? Who knows who Vivas is? Who knows what Vivas' last name is? Carthacan. Incorrect. His last name is not Carthacan. His last name is Smith. I know. I know. Are you shocked yet? I am. The reason he took up the name Carthacan is because in his high school days in the mean streets of Alpharetta when he went to Chattahoochee. He took up the banner, banner or whatever it's called, of uh, Carthacan because he was a moonlighting as a freestyle battle rapper at Trader Joe's. <laughs> exactly. That was his song. He originated that song. Whole Foods recruited him, but he decided... He did. He turned down Whole Foods for Trader Joe's. True. Uh, who knows who Abby is? Who knows who Abby is? Are you aware that she is the niece of Ric Flair? Ooh. That's right. Ooh. To beat a man, you gotta beat the man. They don't oh. know who Rick Flair is. No. Oh, then ask Abby about how much she loves the cat. Alright. Alright, are we good on this slide, everybody? Perfect. Alright, so it should not be impact turnable. I'm not sure if it's how you spell turnable. Best I could do at 12 and uh, 11 o'clock at night. Alright? What I mean by that is when you read a card or when you read an add-on, and let's say you read an add-on that like ends in economic collapse. Do you know how easy it is to impact turn it? We just did it, right? Right? Everybody saw that? Here's the problem. What two speeches come after the 2AC? Nag block. block. How many minutes is in a nag block? Okay. Imagine a world where your add-on gets impact turned in the negative block. How hard is it to recover? Yeah. Very hard, right? Because what can't what can't you do? You can't kick it. They've impact turned it. They have not made a defensive argument against your add-on. They have just said, you know what, the economic collapse thing, that's probably, that, that, that's probably a good thing. You prevented that. That's, that's not going to work out for you. Right? Uh, the one that I saw the most last year on the China topic was uh, cyber attacks. I hadn't heard of cyber attack impact turn yet. So make sure that the impact turn itself is not, or the impact you extend as an add-on is not impact turnable. OK? Make sense? All right, do we move on? All right, now, the last thing I'm gonna do before we get out of here is talk to you all about how this operates in an actual debate. We're gonna go through every major speech minus the 1AC, all right? Some of this is gonna be simplistic, some of it is gonna be really, really nuanced, so I want everybody to pay attention. Where are, where are my debaters who, are, who have never had a debate before? Who has never had a debate? Raise your hand, raise them high, all right. This part is very important. So I see this in a lot of novice debates. You don't read all parts of the disaid. You'll read like the link, the uniqueness, the link, and the internal link, but you won't read an impact. If you don't read an impact, do you have a disaid? No. no. Because of why? I don't know why the aft is something bad. Economic collapse is not an impact in and of itself. It may cost some people some jobs, but it's not an impact in the context of the debate. Make sure you read all the parts of the DA. This is for everyone. Time your DA shells. You need to know how long it takes you to read all of your disass shells, right? If you don't know what a disass shell is, don't worry, ask your lab leader. But you need to know how long it takes you to read the one and see for the federalism disass, the econ disass, the other econ disass. The reason you do that is because not everyone's speed is the same and different strategies require different things. So you want to make sure that you know that you can get through the disad with enough time without running out of time because you only have eight minutes in the one and C. Make sense? 
And this is also last. Don't read impact defense that takes out your own impact. This is for everyone. I see this a million times a year, whether it's college or it's in uh, high school. People will read, let's just stick to the econ, dis or no, people will read a relations advantage or disad that ends, in new, that ends in global warming, not being able to solve global warming, and then they will read an imp a defense card on the case debate that says there's no impact to global warming. You've just taken out your own disad. Because all the 2AC needs to do is, you know what? We'll concede that there's no impact to global warming. That makes your disad goes away. You lose a DA, we lose an advantage. Sounds fine to us. Moving on. All right? Don't do it. Especially if this is a disad you want to go for. Maybe them conceding that advantage is good for you because that advantage is something that you just don't have good answers to. But general rule of thumb, do not read impact defense that takes out the DA. All right? Strategies for writing 2AC blocks or the 2AC. When you're writing your 2AC blocks, you need to be thinking about where you want to be in the 2AR, what argument you want to go for in the 2AR to beat that particular disad, right? So if you think that you have impeccable defensive arguments against a disad, you need to make sure that you front load your 2AR, or 2AC, excuse me, with enough defensive arguments to help you win that disad, okay? You also want to be thinking about when they are deploying their disass in a 1NC, what is the weakness of that disad, right? If the weakness of the federalism disad is not necessarily the link debate, but the impact debate, then I would probably spend a little bit of time explaining why there's very little risk to that particular disad. In two ways, time your speeches. You need to have long and short blocks. Who in here has ever written a long and short block for an argument? I should see all my kids with their hands up. Thank you. All right. Who knows the reason for why we do this? This is a complex question. Uh, I haven't heard from you yet in the blue shirt. Yes, sir. Depending on how many off the one and C has, you want to like time yourself right? Yes. Everybody in this room has different variations of speed, right? Some teams, who has debated a team that's like, I'm going seven off, right? And then you'll debate a team that's like, I'm going three off. Should you read the same block for both scenarios? No. You should have a long block for the shorter one in C debate that's about to occur, and a, sh I'm sorry, long block for the shorter C strategy, and a shorter block for the longer strategy. Why? Because you need to cover all the arguments. One of the things that I'll probably do is I'll just put in my shorter block all the key answers I need to make. I want to waste time on arguments that I'm not going to go for in the 2AR. I don't have the time. I may be read one or one to three cars based on your speed. Does that make sense? Make sense? Everybody good? Okay. Uh, I want to take a second to do this. How many people have ever debated a disad that they've not had a block for? Who has heard a disad and been like, I've never heard of this disad before. What is this nonsense? What is the fidget spinning disad? I don't know what it means. <laughs> Eric didn't write a block for me. I don't know what to tell you. I give up. All right? These are five steps that you can take to prepare you to answer that disad, even if you don't have a prepared 2 block. You need to read the link and know your app. Know what your app does and determine whether or not the link is specific to the app. We've talked about specificity of the link debate, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Have your add-ons ready to go. If anything, if I, if someone is going for a DAK strategy, all right, if someone is going for a DAK strategy and you don't answer the DA effectively enough, you can still win the debate even if the judge is like, I do think you triggered a DA, but the AV outweighs. Why? Because I've read, read add-ons to prove that I outweigh. This is a little bit more advanced for my younger kids. You should also have this too. Have an impact defense file. An impact defense file is a go-to move because in that file you should have basically every impact that someone has ever read and then you go, there's no impact to that. You should know where that file is and know what's in that file. That is on you, it is not on your coach. 
if five minutes before the debate, you hear that they're reading a diss ad, you don't have a block for it, you're like, Eric, I don't know what to say. I'm gonna say, where's the impact defense file? You're like, uh, oh. And I'm gonna go roll off with a fish there. Have your thumpers ready. You want generic thumpers that indicate that, hope, it's harder on this topic probably. Last year it wasn't as hard. Uh, but you want to have some thumpers that are just like uh, the U.S. federal government is spending money on things now. The United States federal government is implementing regulations now on education. The U.S. federal government is implementing things that like hurt state rights. Things like that. You want to have those thumpers ready to go so you'll be able to thump to this end. And then you got to make sure you do impact calculus. This is key. Even if you sort of don't do the first four, if you can still do effective impact calculus, you can still outweigh the DA. Make sense? Make sense, everybody got these five things? There are probably more than these five things, but these are the five that I sort of thought of that I wanted to share with you all, all right? The blob. Have your, why did I put you are? I don't know what I'm doing here. Anyway, have your two, eight, two NC blocks ready, or your blocks ready to the dis right? Have your overview already ready to go, typed up on a block. Have your uniqueness wall ready to go. A uniqueness wall is just an extension of your original one and uniqueness with a couple of extra cards. Link wall, same premise. Your impact wall should have a diversity of impacts. All right? I want to skip down to number three real quick. Impact diversity. You should read multiple impact scenarios in the negative block. Preferably, this should be the 2 and C, not the 1 and R, unless the 1 and R is taking the dis ad and the dis ad only. Okay? Why would you want to read multiple new impact stories on a DA? Yes? Because um, the multiple reasons the one, the 1AR has to respond to all of them. Yes. You just go for that one. Pressure on the 1AR. Debate is a game, kids, which means it requires strategy. The 1AR has five minutes to respond to 13 minutes of arguments. The harder you make it for the 1AR, the more likely that 1AR is to drop something, which allows for you to probably exploit that in a debate. For well, my younger debaters, and even more, more advanced debaters, the speech doc is not your flow. Flow the debate. Flow the arguments on the dis ad. Do not look at the speech doc and try to determine I'm just going to answer the speech doc. What if I don't put my analytical arguments on the speech doc? What do you do then? You drop them. That's not good. Flow the debate. All right? 1AR. Maybe the hardest speech to debate, I think it is. Pick and choose what arguments you want to go for in a dis ad. I see a lot of debaters in the 1AR who simply don't pick and choose, but try to answer everything. If somebody is going six off and going for case, do you tr try to extend every argument on the DA? No, you are not that fast. And if you are that fast, we need to have a conversation about you coming to Emory University. I just want to have that talk right now. All right? We'll give you a fidget spinner with Emory. All right, pick and choose. There is a caveat here. The 2A is the captain of the affirmative ship. What that means is you extend the arguments the 2A tells you. Under no circumstances should you extend arguments that the 2A did not tell you to extend. So if you're like, I want to extend the impact defense card, and the 2A says, I want to go for the link term, and you get up and you go for the impact defense card, you've made the debate harder for you to win. Trust your 2A, all right? Unless for some reason you can convince them otherwise, which you know maybe shouldn't be happening. You want to have, you want to have, you want to extend the arguments that the 2A wants you to extend because the 2A C block was written with the 2A R in mind. Does that make sense? And only read cards unless you have to. Don't go in, go up with like 15 cards in a 1A R. You're not going to read them, all right? Two and R. When you're, I'm not going to talk about the counter plan DA debate. That's going to happen in the later lecture. But if you're going for the DA case debate, don't forget the case. I see a lot of kids spending four minutes and 30 seconds extending the dis ad and then 30 seconds on case. Spoiler alert, if, you, if the other team literally drops the dis ad, the affirmative team can still, can still win the debate. Did you know that? Who didn't know that? Who didn't know if you drop a dis ad, the affirmative team can still win the debate? Raise your hands. You know why the affirmative team can still win the debate? 
Because of impact, oh, go ahead. Yeah, they can outweigh it. A drop disad is not the terminal end of the debate. The impact is the terminal end of the debate. Even if it is completely dropped, the app still has a chance. Okay? So, the two ends. Don't forget the case debate. I would probably get here, depending on the disad, with no less than a minute left. And you need to make sure you spend a fair amount of time impacting or hindering the ability of the app to solve the case. Because you don't want them to win on purely the app outweighs. All right? Make impact.